Hey folks, this is the Rabble Rasm Rich Bruce Rob. Well, ladies and gentlemen, the tornado is going to come down. And so we Tom has it with this crystal ball ready to go, as always, as ever. Okay, I'm getting sick of these fucking draws in MMA. Two of them this week in the Dana White Contender Series. One of them wrecked my lineup. The other one, uh, Grasso versus Shevchenko. Big controversy with a 10-8 round for Grasso in the fifth. Uh, I didn't really watch the entire fight in detail, but I can tell you that I thought that it was Shevchenko's fight, but Grasso did really beat her up in the fifth. It was her best round. Can't deny that. Don't know if it's 10-8 round because there's mostly grappling, but... Uh, she, she came close to pulling off a miracle yet again. Not a lot of people can do that to Shevchenko, so I did not have that on my dance card. <laughs> Just did not see that one coming. So uh, my big bet last week that paid off was Roman Kopilov. Talk about patterns all the time, I'm betting. Roman Kopilov, second round knockout. I did say that on the show last week, and I did bet it, but not bet enough. <laughs> it's, uh, it's my one bet that paid off from last week. I thought there was going to be a lot of earlier knockouts. So. It's a tough card, tough card to predict. But I think we got a good one this weekend. Uh, just quickly go through it. it. was, you know, a very even match between Shevchenko and uh, Grasso. I think Grasso having the confidence that she's already gone five rounds, um, it gave her the ability to coast in some areas when she was getting on the worst side of it. And then in other areas, she knew exactly when to go after Shevchenko and get the grappling on and get her jujitsu moving. And uh, yeah, she just had a vicious fifth round, fifth round, but um, they actually went as far as asking the Nevada State Athletic Commission to investigate the judge that went that day. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if you can call it a 10 8 round. Definitely 10 9. But, you know, they say you gotta take it from the champion. And obviously, in the fifth round, Shevchenko did not do enough to say that she, she took it from the champion. Took it back from the champion. So, I don't know. Uh, draw is a draw, but that's why they have trilogies. <laughs> that's why they make rematches. Yeah. Uh, Jack Della Manalina thought was going to do better against Kevin Holland. Ended up being a split decision. You know, just the experience factor. Della Manalina really didn't work too hard to get the win. Uh, didn't really seem to be going for the knockout. He came close a couple times, but uh, yeah, Kevin did enough to get one judge on his side anyway. Raul Rosas Jr. I did not expect him to bring the knockout power. It would have been it would have been one of those first 60 second win bets. Uh, I'm not sure what the odds were, but uh, he won in 54 seconds of the first round against Terrence Mitchell. I thought Mitchell was a good underdog. But uh, Rosa steamrolled him. Bad one. Uh, Daniel Zellhuber at lightweight got an Anaconda choke submission over Christos Giagos. That's another one I got in a parlay, but the rest of them didn't pay off. Uh, Kyle Nelson against Fernando Padilla ended the unanimous decision for Kyle Nelson there. Uh, just the experience factor. Padilla didn't have as many fights and just not enough. Good competition. Lupita Godinez got a second round submission over uh, Elise Reed, your naked choke. And a good friend there, buddy. Going to be money. Roman Kopilov. KO from a punch to the body. Not only did he win in the second round, but four minutes and 44 seconds into the second round. Just 16 seconds left to go. And a, and a punch to the body ended up. Uh, then we had a no contest. Uh, it stopped at 3.47 in the first round. We call it a premature stoppage. Uh, Edgar Chavez against Daniel De Silva. So that one was wiped out. 
Tracy Cortez got a unanimous decision over Jasmine Juice and before that. And Charlie Campbell getting the first round knockout. Three minutes and 38 seconds against Alex Reyes. So really, I mean, if you're looking like I do all the time at the first round knockout picks. I mean, who's, who's friggin' got a crystal ball good enough to tell you? Rosas <laughs> and Campbell are going to be the only first round knockouts on that card. I don't know. I obviously couldn't be that guy. <laughs> I figured there'd be a couple more first round stoppages, but we always say, you know, no decisions. Decisions happen more than you think they will. Anyway, so that's that card. Um, we also had Josephine Lindgren Knutson winning over Marnik Mann. That was a unanimous decision. And the draw I was talking about this week was. Um, in Dana White's Contender Series, right in the middle of the card. Um, and it was classic striker versus grappler situation. I did win 36 bucks on the lineup because it turns out when you just bet the straight money line bets, there's a draw. They just void at that. But they let you keep the rest of the parlay. So I won 36 bucks on the lineup that I picked. <laughs> I thought it was like, oh, I was so pissed off. Because the girl that uh, could have won it was the striker. And she got the 10-8 round and lost the first two rounds because the grappler just out-wrestled her. And then the grappler got tired. And she was just durable enough to take all the punches that came at her. And the other girl just didn't have the knockout power. So she couldn't take her out of there. But, you know, that's a 10-8 round. When you knock the girl ass like four times, the girl tries to grapple you. She stuffs the takedown, makes her get back up, and it was just like, you know, she was tired too, so she, she just didn't have enough to get the knockout, but man, she tried. She tried. So, that was probably more deserving of a, of a draw. What a, what a fight. She just exhausted the other girl. And uh, one of the things that I think fighters don't do enough in the big fights, she was, she was probably... Uh, very wise to do against a, a girl like that, a grappler that would end up having to stand up so many times in the third round. And that was when she was on her back she, instead of, you know, going down with her and falling into that trap. This girl kept kicking her in the fucking thighs, like just jacking up those sides of the thighs on each side before she would let her up. <laughs> a referee would make her stand up. So that was kind of kind of a good move. But yeah, just not enough to get uh, a decision or a knockout. She tried to. Definitely tried. All right, so we've got uh, a big one this weekend. Tough to predict. You know, Fiziev is coming off one of the biggest losses of his career against Justin Gaethje, but you know he's tough to knock out. He's probably going to lose by decision if he loses. Gamrot? always wins by decision lately, so I don't know. I'd say Fiziev first round knockout if he's going to win. Gamrot by decision if he's going to win. And you can actually do that bet on most, well, I know on DraftKings you can. You can do what's called an alternate decision. <coughs> that. Uh, Bryce Mitchell against Dan Ige. Mitchell has mostly submission wins. Um, I just has a lot of experience, though. And he, he hits like a hammer. And Bryce Mitchell, I don't think he's been against anybody like with his experience level. Have not fought the big names yet. He's one of them. But he's, he's got six losses, you know. So that's that's a very evenly matched fight to me. I think Dan Ides could get a knockout first and second round. But Bryce Mitchell, submission. So, knock out our submission. You know, that's another ultimate decision bet. Uh, Marina Rodriguez. I, I, I like the, uh, for the record, my crystal ball says Mitchell will come back. Mitchell will come back. He's, he's been slinging shit on the farm. <laughs> and he's, 
jacked up now. He actually does run a farm. He does all our videos. He's actually one of the most controversial UFC fighters outside of uh, Sean. <laughs> Both Sean's champions. Uh, Marina Rodriguez. Let's see. I got I got some notes on this one. Let's find Marina. What do we got for Marina? Rodriguez. She's got two losses in a row. She's uh, most likely to win by decision if she does. And um, the good thing about this matchup with Watterson is this is the second time around, and she's already gone five rounds with Michelle. She won that one by decision. So Watterson has three losses in a row. This one's pretty much a lock decision or, you know, if you want to do decision or KO or decision or submission. Either way, I think this one's a freaking lock. I don't see Gomez after a five-round beating <laughs> figuring it out. Uh, Brian Battle, 9-2, and two, coming in against A.J. Fletcher at welterweight. This one could be quick. Brian Battle has uh, first round knockout potential or submissions ability. Uh, Fletcher, same thing. <laughs> Ten and two against nine and two. Talk about even on paper. Uh, I think AJ has a little bit more prime time UFC experience, but uh, Brian's one of our rising stars. Wants to put his name on the map in a heck of a name. Cannot deny Brian Battle is a good fight. <laughs> so, yeah. KO or submission. Both of them. Hedge your bets. <laughs> uh, Dan Argueta at Bantamweight. 9 and 1, fighting Miles Johns, who's 13 and 2. And I got to go with Johns on that one. He's got a lot of good experience. Our is still a little bit fresh to the sport. Uh, what do I got? What do I got? Oh, no. right. First round submission potential, though, is there for Argueta. He does have four submissions, and a lot of them in the first round. Um, Johns, though, I'd go KO or decision on him. He's got seven decisions and four knockouts. So, and he's 13 and 2. So that's 11 wins by stoppage. I mean by KO or decision. Eleven. So the other two by submission. It's nine nine wins by stoppage. Technically. Alright. So then we got uh Tim Means. They call him the Dirty Bird. Great great MMA nickname. He has unfortunately had uh, three dirty losses in a row. But he submitted, he got submitted in two of his last three losses. But Fialo is not a submission guy. Um, and Means actually does have 19 knockouts to go with his 32 wins and 15 losses. Only five submissions himself and eight decisions. Fialo, he's, uh, he's got a lot of first round knockouts, believe it or not. 13 knockouts to go with 16 wins, seven losses, but. Bad side of that is when you go for knockouts, get what? Guess what? You, you get knocked out. <laughs> you know, you try to go toe to toe with somebody, and, and they say, "Oh yeah, yeah, I got you. I got you, and I raise you." <laughs> and uh, well, thirteen knockouts. That obviously leads me to believe. Um, with a guy that's got KO or decision written all over him for that bet with the experience factor alone. Um, they both got three losses in a row. It's like a loser leaves town fight. <laughs> loser leaves town fight. So I'd, I'd do a you know a flyer on Fiala, first round knockout. And Tim Means, uh, knockout or decision. I don't think he's going to submit Fiala. He might get submitted, Tim Means, but uh, I think that's an outside chance. Very outside chance. I think Fiala is going to depend on his knockout power there. I you know, hope that Means is all washed up. But we'll see. We'll see which loser has to leave town. <laughs> might not get a UFC contract uh, again after fourth loss. 
Jacob Malcoon coming in at seven and two. He's not a lot of UFC experience in that um, resume. Cody Brundage has a lot more, but he's also got a few more losses. Cody has five losses, eight wins. Malcoon is seven and two. And uh, I like Malcoon by decision, if anything. Uh, but Brundage has KO or submission ability, first round knockout ability. So. A chance for a flyer there. Uzban, I think, is almost guaranteed knockout or decision. Collier's got a bunch of losses in a, in a row, and uh, Uzban is not the craziest heavy favorite, but he's got first round knockout ability. Collier. Doesn't look like he's he's got much of a chance in this one. Usman's nine and two, Collier's thirteen and nine. That's not bad. Okay. Mizuki Inouye, fourteen and six at Strawweight, fighting Hannah Goldie. I like Inouye in that one. Submission or decision. I wouldn't even put a bet on Goldie. She just she's got like one submission win in the first round. I remember watching that one. I was very surprised by that. And it's like, I think that's pretty much her best fight in the last five. Anyway, uh, Rendon has no UFC fights in the first fight of the night. Montserrat Rendon. She's 5-0, and though. 5-0. and I just I don't think she's ready for this. Uh, Vidal girl, she is just 7-1. and one. Uh, and She's got some knockouts. She's got some submission. Ability, so KO or submission there. That's it. That's that card. So we got to yep, talk boxing now. We've had Tony on the sidelines for a week and a half here. You know what the highlight of the week that you, you didn't join us was for boxing? We got to talk about uh, our favorite boxing name. This season, the, the guy with the first name shook deep. <laughs> he won. He won. So we talked about that. This week we have. Let's see. We're gonna talk about when these are results. Wednesday. Nothing huge. Monday we had the WBO World Super Flyweight Title. Won by Junto Nakatani. 25 and 0. Goes to 26 and 0. Beat R.G. Cortez. Who's fallen to 25, 4 and 2 now at Super Flyweight. And we had the co main event uh, Kenshiro Taraji. 21 and 1. TKOing Hecky Budler. 35 and 4. Light Flyweight for two titles WBA Super. World Light Flyweight and WBC World Light Flyweight title. That was a big one. Saturday. Biggest fights were in Canada, I guess. No. Japan. I am not a fan of this um, updates they did on Box Rec. Oh, yeah. You know, I'm trying to look at the schedule, but it's like back in the day, like click on a card and you would see everybody, whether it was a past card or or a upcoming card. Yeah. And I'm like, I'm looking at this one now, I'm like, this is uh and I'm trying to see and I'm like I'm scrolling through, I'm like, oh good, there's um you know, fighting Alma Tez I'm like, I gotta go through that one. We got Stalin, we got Frankendorf. Like, <laughs> Let me just get some goddamn uh, fights in places that are gonna like, okay, good, we got Oh, here's a good one coming up in Wembley this weekend. It's a rematch. Yeah. Um, Zell Zhang and Joe Joyce. That was a good fight the last time. Mm -hmm. Joyce was favored, and Zhang really, you know, beat him up. You know, swelled his eyes shut. In fact, um, I was scrolling through my phone the other day, and somebody had made a meme after that fight with uh, Joyce's eyes swollen shut, and they photoshopped Homer Simpson's face over it because. His eye looked like Homer Simpson's mouth. <laughs> <laughs> what, do you, what do you think a loss will do to Joyce's career if he loses this rematch? Wow. I mean, that, that, 
would that would be big. I mean, and I mean, Zhang's. I mean, he's you know considered older. You know, um, and he had that. You know, one fight I think it was Jerry Forrest he was fighting, and he looked like he was really in a lot of trouble in that. But he's a big guy. He, he's nothing finesse. He's a southpaw. He's got that big left hand, and he could not miss Joyce with that in the last fight. I mean, he could he, he could miss. And I mean, and there was nothing pretty about it. It was just hard. You could see every left hand that he landed was damaging. Yeah. And you know he, you know, really really busted Joyce up pretty bad. And you know. You're right, Tom. You know, a loss here, um, and it was Joyce's first loss. He was 15 and 0 coming in, 14 knockouts, and I mean, you know, that was a six round TKO. I mean, he took you know a lot of punishment. And the thing is, not that he just not he didn't just lose the fight. He took a lot of punishment in that fight, right? And I mean, you're, both guys are six foot six. Um, you know. Um, Zhang didn't have one loss, a unanimous decision to Philippe uh, Hergervig, uh, um, the draw against Jerry Forrest that I just mentioned. But, you know, how does um, Judy come back from that beating? Is that right? Yeah. Of- because he, he had no answer in that fight. No, there not at just, all. There was just nothing. He could he could do different. So it's going to be interesting to see what strategy he has. Uh, I'm really interested in it. Yeah. Um, we actually had some good fights over the weekend. Yeah, I'm looking at some of the stuff we got now. I know, Tom, we got we got a card out in Cleveland. Oh, here we go. Um, last well, I, Saturday, I don't know card, but. last Saturday we had uh, a little bit of upsets. Uh, actually, some good fights going back to Friday. I don't even know if we read all these on the show last week, but Mercedo Gesta got KO'd, uh, and William Zapata Segura stayed undefeated, and moves to twenty nine and zero. Gesta thirty four four and three at lightweight. And then there was a bunch of titles on the line, and then other two fights on the card. Victor Morales stayed undefeated with the unanimous decision over Edwin Palomares. 19-0-1 for Morales. Palomares 18-5-2 now. That was for the WBA Intercontinental Featherweight title. And then we had uh, Yocasta Valley. 28-2, beating Maria Macheo Santiso. 11-3 for IBF minimum weight title, and WBO World Minimum Weight title. Unanimous decision. Not a lot of knockouts at minimum weight, I'm thinking. <laughs> tough, tough weight. And then we had uh, the Priest, Eric Priest. Victory by majority decision, 10 0. Beating Simon Manson, lost to 13 and 2. We had, uh, this is a mismatch of the week down in Pueblo. Jordan Fuentes coming in at 4-1 and one for the unanimous decision win at featherweight over Cornelio Phipps coming in at 43-2. and two. Wow. I bet you if you could bet on that, he would have cleaned up on <laughs> Fuentes. 43-2 and two against 4-1. and one. Congratulations to Fuentes there. Starting off well. All right, and the other big one was Friday. Um, this must have been on ESPN or something. Luis Alberto Lopez, 29 and 2 now, with the unanimous decision win over Joette Gonzalez, who falls to 26 and 4 at featherweight. That one's for the IBF title, world featherweight title. And then we had Jermaine Ortiz, just 16 fights coming in, 16 wins coming into this one. Now he's got 17. 17 1 and 1 against Antonio Moran, falls to 29 6 and 1. He's looking for his 30th win at Super Lightweight. Did not get it. And then Xander Zayas, no surprise, keeps rolling on. 16 and 0 going in, 17 and 0 now. He beat a uh, pretty good contender, Roberto Valenzuela Jr. 
21 and 4 coming in. Got the fifth loss. And they got a couple titles now NABF, Super Welterweight, and NABO, Super Welterweight, WBO, NABO. A lot of O's. So I, was, I was watching that um, Giants fight last week. And, I mean, that boy, that boy you know, was tough. I mean, he had no quit in him. And he was starting to take, you know, a pretty good, you know, beating. And he got that bad cut. I mean, wicked. I mean, it was just pouring. And, you know, and the guy wanted to fight. You had to give him credit on that. Like, he had no quit in him. Yeah. Then the last one from last week was uh, down in San Antonio, Texas. Rafael Pedroza came in at 15 and 0, got knocked out by Ramon Cardenas, who was 22 and 1, now 23 and 1, at Super Bantamweight. I don't know the round, I don't have that in front of me, but uh, that was the first O to go. And then uh, the real somebody's O's got to go fight uh, was won by Mirko Coelho. He was 12 and 0 coming in, going against Rudy Garcia. Rudy lost this one. 13 0 and 1 coming in, and 13 turned out to be the unlucky number. <laughs> He's now 13 1 and 1. Uh, and then we had another undefeated fighter, Freitas Rojas. He moved to 12 0, and then Sal Bustos, 15 2. That's it for our two star and above results. <laughs> That's how we do it now on BoxRec. All right, so what did we, let's see if we missed anything. Sorry, we don't have our Jesus Fights of the Week so much now. <laughs> Guidos. Oh boy, BoxRec wants me to support them. Got a socialist internet going on right now. Same thing with the shirt on all the time. They're like, why are you using an ad blocker? We need to blast you with ads to make money. <laughs> uh, okay, so let's do some of things that work there. Saturday. What do we have? No titles there. So, so we got Zhao yeah, Zhang is the big fight. We got uh, WBC International Super Lightweight title undercard Zhang fight. Kane Gardner, 16 and 2. And Pierce O'Leary, 12 and 0. Give me a name like Pierce. Bring in all fights, okay. <laughs> Richardson Hitchens versus Jose Zapata on the zone. It's in 16 and 0. Zapata 37 and 3. Three titles on the line. IBF North American Super Lightweight. WBC Silver Super Lightweight. WBO NABO Super Lightweight. A couple of them are big. And uh, we got Steve Rolls 22 and 2. Fighting Austin Williams undefeated at 14 and 0. For the IBF North American Middleweight title that card and uh oh, big blockbuster female fight number two in the world jessica mccaskill 12 and 3 fighting sandy kathy ryan who's six and one at welterweight for four titles ibo wba wbc and wbo world welterweight titles kind of like mccaskill on that one and then uh well, this one's kind of a surprise. Connor Ben, 21 and 0, fighting Rodolfo Orozco. That's super welterweight. Rodolfo, 32, 3 and 3. Rodolfo. I know what the odds on Rodolfo winning are. <laughs> I guess Connor must still be in trouble with uh, some organizations because they have no rank on him. Really? What else? What other news do we have? How them Phillies doing, Tony? You gonna hit a home run? <laughs> no. They got. They just gotta get this out, and they won. So. 
Oh, geez. Yeah, Baltimore didn't win it anyway, so that bet's fucked. All right. Let's see what I got for Google Alerts. So something about uh, Jason Miller being back in the news. <laughs> he looks... He looks like the guy on Cash Cab now. <laughs> you guys ever see that Cash Cab show? Or is it a comedian? No, I guess same guy. Let's see what we got. Yeah, there's a story about uh, Rodolfo Orozco fights in Orlando. Ryan Garcia versus Tiafimo Lopez being targeted for February 10th. You know what? Hey, you know what? Hey, guys, I just thought of something. Um, you know, something I wanted to bring up, obviously, I was on the call with you guys last week. Um, but I was thinking about this, Rich, and, you know, both of you guys, as, you know, formerly in the service, um, I just wanted to get, you know, your thoughts. You know, like, you think of things sometimes, and, you know, you know, you, you wonder. Yeah. So, last week, obviously, last Monday, was the 22nd anniversary of 9-11. And normally around that time of the year, um, I watch like a lot of different documentaries on people, especially people that have sur that survived, you know, especially if they were in the buildings, um, firefighters, um, people that were office workers, um, people lucky that were late to work or they were dropping their kids off at daycare or something. So I was watching one a couple of years ago and they were talking to a guy who survived and he was talking about some of his friends that did not survive. And, um, and he goes, some of his friends that did not make it were also friends of his that he knew from the New York Athletic Club in um, downtown Manhattan. And I was wondering, you know, I boxed there two years back in 96 and 97. And I'm like, I wonder if anybody that saw me fight those nights were, were you know, injured or, or killed, yeah. you know, I know the first time I went in 96, um, you know, I went up there and fought, um, met Arthur McKinney. Then the second year I fought, um, I lost a real close one to a guy from Air Force and, um, another, another tall, lanky guy from Air Force. I guess they breed those. <laughs> and I remember one guy came up to me and he goes, you won that fight. He goes, you won last year and you won this year. They keep ripping you off here. And I thanked him. And I said, yeah, thank you. I appreciate that. And I'm like, man. Um, then there was another guy the night before the fight, you know, before the weigh-in, I was a half pound over. And um, Eddie Wishes from Air Force was busting my boss. He's like, no, you don't have to. You lose that half pound. And Mike Martino from Reno was like, dude, Eddie, are you really busting his balls over a half pound? Uh -huh. And Eddie Wishes was like, yeah. So I had to run, go up on the track around the um, – where the ring was going to be and run laps around this track. So as I'm running, they're showing highlights of that Sunday's NFL games. So they're about to show the Eagles highlights for a stop. <laughs> and they were playing the Steelers that day. Eagles won. It was an upset. And this one guy, now there's three lanes on this track. And I'm now on the inside lane watching with the TVs on and see this highlight. And I see guys in like that same lane. He doesn't run around. He runs into me. Now he can see me, obviously. You're not supposed to be stopping on the track. What are you doing? He's like yelling at me. I'm like, dude, I just want to see who won the game. So he's like, he like yelled at me. Mm -hmm. um, I wonder if something happened to him, you know? Yeah. You, you, people that weren't there to watch me. I was like, you know, I just, I always think about it around this time of year. Yeah. Well, I always remember that um, John Howard, the MMA fighter, broke the nose of the Boston Marathon bomber dude. The one that got killed. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Small world, MMA circles, you know. 
You never know. Uh, hey, um, Rich, did you see Scully's one rant today about people that bullshit about their, um, you know, their boxing experience? I didn't read the whole thing, but. Oh, dude, you yeah, I saw your comment. I saw the comment. I know exactly what you're going to talk about. The Rocky movie. Uh, that's part of the reason I love John. You know, yeah. he's such a, he's so honest. But he gets people to talk. Relatable. Yeah. You know, like, he's a guy you can sit down and talk to. <laughs> and, you know, and, and from his pedigree, you know, he was a, you know, multiple time world title challenger. And now he's a top trainer. <laughs> but he's a guy. You can just sit down and he would talk to you, you know, and have a great conversation. And everything with him is relatable. And, like, he'll tell stories about his fighting days, about his training days. And you're like, oh, my God, I can totally, um, I can see this in my mind. Yeah. And he, you know, he needs his own like show. Bullshit. He goes, he show. We definitely won't call you out. He goes, and if you're going to bullshit, make yeah. it, you know, somewhat believable. Like, don't say you're something like. 68 and 3 with 61 knockouts. <laughs> you know, don't do that. You know, you know, make it. You know, so I need. And, and well, it's the eight-time like, UFC WBO champion. <laughs> heavy middleweight. Seven different weight classes. <laughs> yeah. Tom, so I have to copy and paste an email to you. It's it's real funny. Uh, yeah, I, I I'd love to see that. We need to, I, to I get. Just, uh, I just love his rants and comments. We need to get uh, Scully on a Netflix show. We we'll call it Scully on the Street, and we have him. We, really we have him John do the, show. the mean, band. Really he does his band thing. All right, now this is band. You guys can't do this anymore. He'll do like something that annoys him, and then he, you know, got the Aunt Fran episodes. Aunt Fran against the squirrel. That was a fun one. Uh, Aunt oh Fran God, shopping. Yeah. He, he put something the other day, and it was like. I see, like, there's a ghost something on my page. I think it's Aunt Fran. I'm like, dude, you let her have a page? She's like, <laughs> yeah, I think she's snuck it in. <laughs> like, you know, Aunt Fran with the squirrel or going to the grocery store, like, arguing about the plums and stuff. Oh, yeah. Maybe you can have a reality show. Yeah. Um, but when he writes things, and you could tell, like, he said he's coming out, you know, with his, like, like anecdotes. It's like, you, you know, of all the people you see that are, you know, in the boxing game over the years, you know, you'll have some guys that, you know, will have successful autobiographies, you know, um, guys like George Foreman. And, and, and the reason you'll see guys that have had successful autobiographies, like, so you take a guy like George Foreman who had, you know, the great career at the beginning, but what made his career was the 10-year layoff the finding Jesus, and then the, the comeback that was, like, improbable. What made um, a, got Mike, Mike, Mike Tyson was because he was Mike Tyson, the highs and the lows. You know, he was, like, his whole career was bipolar. Um, it was exciting, but it was also, you know, manic. Um, Vinny Paz, it came out because of the broken neck. Now, as much as we love Vinny, we got, you got to be honest. If Vinny didn't have the broken neck... Would there have ever been a movie about him? Probably not. Uh -huh. Would there have been like a, a, a book about him? Oh, Probably speaking not. of Vinny, I forgot to oh. tell you, Vinny. Uh, Vinny likes my comment on when I was bidding for one of his signed things. Oh, did he? He actually liked the comment where I, I said uh, one one hundred and forty Mexican jumping beans or something like that. <laughs> he liked it himself. I was like, that's cool. So, um, oh, Vinny's radar again. So We're gonna ask him for John, another interview. John wrote like an autobiography, like about his just his career, and yeah, he fought for the world title, and he fought at the Blue Horizon, he fought over in Germany, and now he trains guys. He's like, okay, that's that's cool, you know, it's that's enjoyable. Um, but the fact that he tells these stories, you know, that's what's you know great. That's what makes his stuff that you like. I want to read this. Yeah. Yeah, he's a good dude. My favorite uh, of all time for him was when he, I think he was in Vegas for a fight. And uh, he went and, like, targeted this guy from the bridge over the over the strip. And he saw this guy was, like, one of them Jesus si saves signs or something like that. And it was like, you know, repent. <laughs> and he walked up to the guy and he filmed it. It was like a 15-minute exchange before the guy, like, walked away from him. Uh, and, and he was just like making the guy question his own faith 
it was it was classic Scully, but I mean he was persistent. Like, what makes you think there's a god? You know, like oh my god, just poking the bear, poking the bear. It was good. He tugged me in a Facebook post uh, probably about 13 years ago. And it comes up every year through Facebook memories because I'm tugging on it, so I'll see it when it comes up. The day I read it, I laughed so hard, I couldn't breathe. And he was saying, like, you know, he was taking in a bunch of, um, you know, young fighters as their coach to an amateur show. And he goes, you know, we're getting ready for the weigh-ins. And he goes, I got to go to the bathroom. So I go to a public, I go to the, in the restroom in the lobby, and he goes, and you know it's good when you're like gagging at yourself. And some another coach walked in, and he goes, and the guy was a southern guy with a big draw accent. He's like, Jesus Christ, oh my God, no, something, no, something died in here. Oh my God, he goes, then I hear the guy burst into the lobby. My God. Someone died in there, like over and over. I think Vinny was that I'm the one that walked out, and everybody's looking at me. <laughs> nice. Yeah, well, we got to try to get Vinny back on the show. Yeah. Scully, too. But uh, other big news um, the UFC class action suit is now on, on, uh, on the last. MMA alerts I got in uh, Google showing on BloombergLaw.com. Uh, Bloomberg, you know, the news service. And there's a guy uh, with an article called UFC Class Action or UFC Class Suit Embodies Two Powerful Legal Weapons in Sports. A guy named Kenneth A. Jacobson from Temple University Beasley School of Law. Isn't that just so ritzy? From Temple University Beasley School of Law. <laughs> but uh, he's basically saying this is a trend in sports. Uh, that athletes are combining two powerful tools, the federal antitrust laws and class action procedure to challenge practices that they allege deprive them of their monetary and other rights. And uh, one of the things that I've always found uh, com completely corrupt uh, that they got away with that's involved in this lawsuit, actually, that, that there's testimony involving it, was John Fitch. And I actually played a clip on the show to John Fitch going off about this lawsuit. So I know he's still a part of it. But John Fitch, they did so dirty when they did the video game. They said, you sign your lifetime rights over or you can leave the UFC. And he said, no. So they threw him right the fuck out of the UFC. And, you know, Dana White could always, you know, use his show mentality. You got to put on a show and say, well, he just wrestle fucks people, as Tom likes to say. <laughs> You know, so we don't need him. But uh, he ended up going back to the table and, and making an agreement after the fact. I don't know what went on behind closed doors, but they, they patched it up. But I guarantee you, people, when that, they found out that happened, they probably advised Dan and White to fix it. Because <laughs> it did not look good for them. Uh, but they got it fixed. I don't know if he ever did actually sign over his lifetime rights, but. It was, if he did, it was under duress. <laughs> it, he didn't last much longer after that. You know, he got out his contract and that was it. But yeah, a lot of these fighters are suing and they got good cases. Uh, the judge is eating out of the, the law firm's hands that are fighting this on behalf of the fighters. And it's supposed to be, I guess, a spring trial. So... That's if it doesn't get delayed six times. And then, of course, there are going to be appeals if they lose. But uh, it'd be smart to, to cut it short and come up with a decent settlement. Um, because, really, honestly, just going through this and losing at the stage they are now, what if uh, what if, if it goes to a jury or a judge? I don't know what, what this class action case does but if it's in the judge's hands and he's already against you you know you're talking four five six billion dollar settlement worst case scenario 
you just went public under TKO, so bad, bad, bad timing. Also, um, I did not know this. Uh, I just found out like two days ago, Dana White's mom died recently. Oh. June White and his father. Um, and he did this big interview. I have not watched the thing, but I guess he got in depth with this big interview with um, the dude that used to be on CNN all the time, the British dude. Can't think of his name. But, uh, you know, he got all personal and stuff like that uh, and talked about his parents dying this year and he said that like he had no feeling about it and you know he's still on the outs with his mom because he said like you know his her family took care of that I had nothing to do with it but I paid for all my dad's expenses for burial <laughs> it's like whoa you know one of his mother's uh, criticisms of him was where she really went south on him and started hating him was when he promised to take care of the grandmother and, and he just supposedly abandoned her but uh, that was interesting you know you get a real perspective on who the guy really is when he doesn't even feel anything with his, parents, his own parents maybe they were shitty to him but still like you gotta feel something I don't know it's kind of weird yeah, it allows him to be such dicks with some of these fighters that he screws over with these contracts Oh, yeah, so that's in the news. I don't know. I haven't heard any hints of settlement, though, so maybe they're just going to throw money at lawyers or something. Deadlock a jury on it or something. Get, get down, weed, get in the technical weeds and brown them. Who knows? But we'll see. All right, you guys got any extra other tidbits? No, I just said he broke that uh, Scully thing. Yeah, thanks. Andre Ward. <laughs> All right. Well, until next week from the sunny shores of Florida, I'll be broadcasting. All right, we will chat right, then. Guys. Hopefully with All a big pocket right, full of betting money. I'm going to drop some bets on the way to the airport. Because <laughs> you can't, there's no legal sports betting in Florida. <laughs> All right. See ya. See ya.